Hello good day viewers. In today's tutorial we are going to continue with our lesson on how to solve second order linear non-homogeneous differential equations by the method of undetermined coefficients. So we are going to look onto a linear combination of two functions to the right. Let us first of all write the general solution which is y equals y sub h plus y sub p y sub h is the general solution to the homogeneous differential equation as always we are going to take the left hand side and equate it to be equal to zero we have y double prime plus y equal to zero let us transform this into an auxiliary equation we have r squared plus one equal to zero this is a quadratic equation let us find the roots r squared will be equal to negative 1. If you take the square root of both sides, we have r to be equal to plus or minus square root of negative 1. And finally, you can see that r could either be positive i or r equal to negative i. This is r1, this is r2. But in general, you know r could either be alpha plus beta i or r2 equal to alpha minus beta i if you relate the two you can see that r1 will be equal to 0 plus i or r2 equal to 0 minus i in each case you can see that alpha is equal to 0 and beta is equal to 1 so now let us substitute this into our general solution. Y of h will now be equal to e to the first root, which is 0, multiplied by x. The whole of this multiplied by a constant cos of beta, which is 1, multiplied by x is still x, then plus another constant, multiplied by sine of beta x, which is the same thing as x. e to the 0, x is the same thing as e to the 0. So we have our general solution to be c1 cos x plus c2 sin x. This is y of h. So this is the general solution to the homogeneous differential equation. Let us keep the result aside. So now let me take this down to find the particular solution. So for the particular solution, which is y sub p, you know, it depends on the nature of the right-hand side. The right-hand side is a linear combination of two functions, trigonometric function and exponential function. For trigonometric function sine x, you know, we have to have two functions, sine and cosine. So something like this, cosine x and sine x then we multiply each by that function which is exponential then we attach constants for the two terms a b then we add together so this is the form of equation we are going to form a e to the x cosine x plus b e to the x sin x so this is the function we need to differentiate twice for the first derivative we have y prime of p which is equal to we are going to treat a e to the x as a single function cos x as another function applied product rule so now let us keep a e to the x constant then we differentiate cosine x, which is going to be negative sine x. Then we add, we now keep cosine x constant. We differentiate a e to the x, which is the same thing as a e to the x. It will not change. Then we move to the second term. We have b e to the x sine x. We keep b e to the x constant 
Then we differentiate sine x, which is going to be cos x. Then we add, we now keep sine x constant. We differentiate b e to the x, which is the same thing as b e to the x sine x. This is our first derivative, but we can bring the like terms together in order to simplify it. All those with sine x, we have one here, we have the other one here. Their coefficients are negative a and positive b, so we can factor that out. y prime of p equal to, we have negative a plus b. Then we multiply by e to the x sine x. Then for those with cosine, we have two of them. We have plus, their coefficients are a and b, so we have a plus b. Then we have e to the x cos x. Then now we are free to take the second derivative, which is y double prime of p. This is equal to, we now treat the whole of this coefficient and this function as a single function and treat sine x as another function. So let us keep this one constant and differentiate this. We have negative a plus b e to the x multiplied by cosine x. Then we add. Now we keep the whole of this constant and differentiate this. Differentiating this will not change anything. negative a plus b e to the x sine x then move to the next one we now keep this one constant and differentiate this we have negative a plus b e to the x sine x now we keep this one constant and differentiate this. Nothing will change. Plus a plus b e to the x cosine x. Again, let us collect the like terms. Those with cosine, we have two of them. But we have to add their coefficients. You can see negative a plus a is 0. Then b plus b is 2b. Therefore, we have 2b e to the x cosine x. Then we collect the other one. Those with sine, you can see them here. But to connect them together, we have to add their coefficients. You can see here, if you distribute this negative in here, we have negative a and negative b therefore b will cancel b we have negative a negative a which is negative two a's negative two a multiply by e to the x sine x so this is the second derivative what we are going to do we are going to substitute second derivative and the function itself this and this into the original equation so for y double prime we are going to replace it with this function here 2b e to the x cosine x minus 2a e to the x sin x this is our second derivative then we add the function y which is the whole of this we have a e to the x cosine x plus b e to the x sin x then we equate it to the right hand side which is e to the x sin x e to the x sin x.
So now let us collect the like terms. We have cosine, we have cosine here. Their coefficients are 2b plus a. We have 2b plus a e to the x cosine x. Then for the second one, which is sine, we have sine here. Their coefficients are negative 2a plus b. Negative 2a plus b e to the x sine x. And to the right, we have e to the x sine x. So this equation is going to be solved by relating the coefficients. From the right hand side, you can see that the coefficient of e to the x sine x is just one. And the coefficient of e to the x sine x to the left is the whole of this negative 2a plus b. So we are going to relate them together. So from the left hand side, we have negative 2a plus b equals 1 and the coefficient of e to the x cosine x to the left is 2b plus a and to the right we have 0 because we don't have any cosine functions to the right. This implies that a is equal to negative 2b. So we can now substitute a equal to negative 2b in this equation. Negative 2 multiplied by a which is negative 2b plus b equal to 1. This is negative 4b plus b equal to 1. We have negative 3b equal to 1. This implies that b is equal to negative 1 over 3. Therefore, we can substitute the value of b in this equation to obtain the value of a. From this, you can see that a is equal to negative 2 multiplied by b, which is negative 1 over 3. a is now equal to 2 divided by 3. Now you can see we have the value of a and the value of b. We are going to substitute them back into this y, which is this equation. Let me copy it. So here is the equation. Let us substitute for a and b here. Therefore, y sub p is equal to a. What is a is 2 divided by 3. We have 2 divided by 3. e to the x cosine x plus b, which is negative 1 over 3. So we have negative 1 over 3 e to the x sine x. So here is our particular solution. But remember that the general solution is given by y sub h plus y sub p. So now let me copy my y sub h to the top. You can see it here. Therefore, y is equal to y sub h, which is this, plus y sub p, which is this one. Let me copy that. Therefore, this is the general solution to that linear second order non-homogeneous differential equation.